This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Very rarely do we go ahead and look at the full picture. Very rarely do we see how he might be compromising himself to go ahead and meet the needs of the family. How has he compromised his identity to go ahead and meet the needs of our family? Hey girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected, and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. I'm totally about to share something I'm not necessarily proud of. However, I trust you guys. So for the longest time, I carried a great amount of resentment, resentment towards Willie, the reason why was because, I mean, he was in the military. He got to be surrounded by his friends. He got to be surrounded by his brothers. He got to go on all these cool trainings. He got to go away for seven months, Okinawa, Afghanistan, Iraq, without any kids. Like a complete vacation, right? Complete vacation. Well, what I didn't realize was... I was carrying resentment because he got to be away. He got to take a break. He had some form of serenity. Meanwhile, here I am with the kids. You know, I was in, I was, I was doing, um, I was doing a whole hell of a lot. I was in my internship. I was in grad school. I was a single mom. And I know whenever I say that, whenever I say that, well, he always gets mad, but it's true. That's what I felt like. I felt like the single mother. And then he would, we had Skype back then and it wasn't Zoom. I don't think Zoom was invented, but yeah, we would be on Skype. We would be on calls. And I remember, and this is where I'm so ashamed to say this, but I remember there was this one time, whew, there was this one time when I had said to him, gosh, I would do anything to change places with you, like anything at all. And I remember him looking at me and saying, you don't know what you're talking about. There's no way. There's no way that I would allow that. And I was like, no, I really do know what I'm talking about. Like, you get to be away. There's no kids, like, constantly around you. You get a little bit of a break. And I remember him looking at me. And he didn't cry, but I remember there was this great deal of pain in his eyes. And he just looked at me and like, it was kind of like, it was kind of like with confusion, you know, and he was trying to portray how like, he was trying to say it without saying it. It was just kind of like this look like, Veronica, no, there's, there's no way. And I look at it now and I'm like, what a selfish thing to say. What an absolutely selfish thing to say. Like, would you really trade places with him just so you could have some form of solace? 
And at the time, hell yeah, I just needed a break. There was so much going on. I felt like everything was on my shoulders. All of the weight was on my shoulders. One thing I failed to do was realize how much weight was on his. He was being shot at. He Every single day while he was away, he was scared and he was not sure whether or not he was going to come back home. I didn't take any of that into consideration. <sighs> My entire vision was focused on what was going on for me and how life was passing me by and how I was completely flooded and overwhelmed with emotions, frustrations, and these this feeling of being overwhelmed. I never really stopped and thought about like what it was like for him. And it wasn't until he and I started to have conversations and he started to open up about Afghanistan and some of the things that he endured. And it was then that it just, I remember going back to that conversation we had on the phone when he was away and I realized, what an idiot. Your partner is out there defending our country, being shot out, bombed at. This is the last place he wants to be. He's living in fear every single day. He's completely hypervigilant every single day. He's not getting sleep. He's not eating well. And he is watching his life, his family, the ones that he loves the most. He's watching them through a small screen and praying that the internet doesn't disconnect. And I started using this exercise. As a matter of fact, I started sharing the story with some of my clients. And I share it along the lines of resentment and how us women carry resentment. And we carry resentment because it's like all of the things that we're doing for our family and how we're trying to create this perfect space for them. We give up everything. We give up damn near our identity to go ahead and create this perfect space for our family, for our kids right? And we don't know who we are outside of all of the roles we play because of all of the things we do. We compromise ourselves over and over. We compromise ourselves emotionally. We compromise ourselves mentally. We literally exhaust ourselves, right? And after working with several men, hundreds of men, and working with couples, one thing I started to realize was, wait a minute, how are men doing the same thing? And I'm not going to lie, once I started working with men, I was like, ah, oh, damn, dude, women are bitches. <laughs> like, we're so mean. We are so mean. And don't get me wrong, I'm not siding with the men at all. But like, damn, damn what we put these men through. And it made me think about my own personal story. That one event, that one time where I had foolishly asked my husband, or I had mentioned to my husband that I wanted to trade places with him, and him being in a war zone. And it, not at all, not me not being at all in this place where I can put myself in his shoes because I was so, I was so hyper-focused on mine. And I started, you know, I started thinking about all of them and that I've worked with. One thing that they have in common is they have also lost themselves in the role of being a father and a husband. They do it in a different way. Hear me out, ladies. Men will work very, very long hours, will harm their bodies in different ways, will put their bodies through excruciating pain just so they can provide for their family. They will go ahead and see their family through a screen on Zoom, on Skype, or FaceTime while their wife gets to be home and enjoy that time with her kids because somebody's enjoying that time. They will ignore their body signals. They will ignore those aches and pains they fell first thing in the morning because they have a job to do. They have income to bring in. They will ignore the times when their body is saying enough and they will push straight through it. I work with a lot of firefighters, a lot of first responders, and um, men that work in the men that work, men that serve our country that are in the military. I also work with a whole lot of high-level executives and business owners. And regardless of whether or not 
they're a first responder or an executive, their purpose is all the same. Be a great provider for our family. After talking to a bunch of men, one thing came, became very, very apparent. Most men are under the impression that they have to be invited to join us. They have worked such long hours away from their family. They have watched their, fa- their kids grow. They've watched their kids grow through a screen. They've missed out on several opportunities and several school functions just so they can provide the perfect life for their family. And they will do this without complaining. And as I started to talk to these men, they started saying the same thing. I feel like a guest in my own home. I feel like I have to be invited to play with my kids. I don't feel supported as a father. I feel like no matter what I do, no matter what I say, it's never enough. And she's going to do it anyway, so why even bother? When I come home, all I want to do is be with my family. I work my ass off, but yet I don't feel welcomed. I am immediately met with anger. I am immediately met with frustrations. I'm not met with love. So it would be just better off. I would totally be just better off if I went back to work. At least there they validate me. At least there I'm provided with some level of support. And the amount of hours and the things that I do to my body are proven to be of worth by a paycheck. Another thing that most men will talk about in therapy, when I ask them, what is it like in the mornings? Ah, that's the worst. I used to be able to pop out of bed, but now I can't. I have to roll out of bed. And I used to be able to pull weeds. I used to be able to do certain things around the house. But I'm going to tell you what, I could only do it for a certain amount of time. And after that, my body's done. When asked, why is that different? Why is that different from you being a first responder to you being home you know, and doing household chores. They immediately look at me and say, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I can help them with that. And usually I do. And my reply is, at work, you are 100% distracted. The minute a call goes off or there's an emergency, you have to go. Very, You have very, very little time to look or think about what's happening with your body. You have very little time. There's constant distractions. At home, you are at peace. Well, as peaceful it could be if you really pissed off your wife, but at home, you are in your safe place. There's not a lot of distractions. There's not a lot going on. So you are very much more in tune with your body than you are as a first responder. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. And I'll watch them here in my private practice on the couch, and they struggle to sit down for a long, per- long periods of time. The clinical hour is 50 minutes, and I'm going to tell you what. They're moving around, trying to adjust themselves so that their back doesn't hurt so much. Another thing that they have mentioned to me is how bad their knees are and how when they get up, kind of sounds like snap, crackle, pop. And I remember my husband, my husband would do this exercise. Oh my gosh, it would bother me so much. I literally wish you guys could see me, but it's like, so he's standing up right before he goes, right before he does his workout and he kind of like squats a little bit and he puts his hands on his knees and then he goes around in a circular motion. He's not, twer- he's not twerking ladies. Don't go there. Dirty minds. Don't go there. But he's literally like moving his body in this circular motion. And I remember looking at him and watching him do this. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Stop that. That is like so not attractive. And Willie's reply would be, I'm warming up my knees. I have to warm them up before I start working out. And it's like, well, do that somewhere else. And he's like, no, I have, I have to warm them up. I sound like such a bitch. Oh, my God. Anyway, and so there he is doing the circular motion, kind of looking like he's twerking, but not really. But he's like twirling, not twirling. He's like moving his knees in this circular motion, right? Hands on his knees, squat position, moving. And then he tells me, Veronica, listen to my knee. 
listen to both of my knees. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. And he's like, just listen. And sure enough, he bends and extends his leg out. And it sounds like snap, crackle, pop. He says, it sounds like Rice Krispie treats, doesn't it, when you squish them? And it's like, yeah, babe, it does sound like that. And I look at my husband and I think about all the things he's done, all the sacrifices he's made. And it's not that I discount mine, not at all. But I realize, damn, men do have it hard. And it's not a measuring game, ladies. I get you do a lot. And so does he. He just does it a different way. And it might not look the way you want it to look with cleaning the dishes, helping out with kids, but he does it in his own way. And it's so important that we acknowledge that because I think what we tend to do is we tend to allow resentment to build. And as that resentment builds, we start to position our partner as the enemy. We hold on to the anger. Very rarely do we go ahead and look at the full picture. Very rarely do we see how he might be compromising himself to go ahead and meet the needs of the family. How has he compromised his identity to go ahead and meet the needs of our family? How is he showing up? The passion is so low these days that I feel parenthood and other commitments are taking control. I want to feel like it's me he wants to spend time with. Yeah, I've said those exact words a hundred times to my friends after realizing that the man I said I do to wasn't the same person or was I just imagining it but here's what I finally realized that changed things for me almost overnight I started to use four simple and effective steps that changed our communication and connection for the better as a licensed marriage and family therapist I got excited and started showing my clients and they too were seeing changes instantly Whether you've been married for one year or 15, these tips work and I can't wait to share them with you. Girl, I got you. I want to personally invite you to my live two-hour online workshop. This is for moms who have said, the empty promises just aggravate me so much. He says he will do something or take care of something, then he doesn't. Communication has always been a weak point for us. He says things without thinking. I try to logically work through things and he reacts emotionally. I try to say what I feel in a constructive manner. He takes it personally and attacks me. Boundaries are a confusing topic for me because I am a helper. I have this innate need to help anyone I can. So if this is you and you are ready to get off this hamster wheel, then allow me to guide you through this four step process. I can't wait to meet you personally. So again, this is a two-hour live workshop. And for whatever reason, if you cannot attend, girl, I got you. This will be recorded, which means you will have lifetime access. This is for women only. If you are ready to go from roommates to lovers, then let's go ahead and step outside of our comfort zones together. Allow me to guide you. If you're ready... What I'd like you to do is go to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop. Again, that is empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop. Get ready, mama, because we are about to do some work. Ladies, I'm here to tell you you're not alone. Resentment is something everybody struggles with, right? But when you get to this place where it's hard to work through resentment, And it's hard for you to regain values after constant arguing. And you just can't see eye to eye. And you're in this space where you're constantly arguing and you're constantly measuring what each other do. That, my friend, is what we call resentment. And I want you to think about, I want you to think about the examples I gave you. And I want you to go ahead and stop. And your first step is going to be to identify how he as well is doing the work. Again, it's not the same as yours. I see that. I hear you. It's not the same as yours. But how might he be showing up the same way you are? How is he also put in, putting in for the family? How is he also compromising himself to meet the family's needs? Write that down. Write that down. 
Another thing I, I want you to do is I want you to think about like, okay, so once you've been able to identify how he might be compromising himself, his body to go ahead and meet the family's needs, I want you to provide him with some level of intimacy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I jumped the gun. I meant to say, I want you to provide him with empathy. No, I'm not trying to tell you, you got to reward him with sex. Gosh, was that like a totally a flow of, <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Reward him with intimacy. No, no, not yet. Not just yet. But I want you to, t- I want you to be able to go out and identify how can you empathize with him? How are you both in the same battle? How are you both trying to go ahead and stay afloat and doing everything you can do, compromising yourself for the family? How can you empathize with them? Try to put yourself in your spouse's shoes. Recognize that they're not the enemy. Maybe, just maybe, they may have good intentions. Another thing I want you to do is I want you to be honest with yourself. How are you positioning your partner as the enemy? How might your own past interrupt your ability to see your partner for who he is? You know, our past experiences set us up to protect ourselves, but they also affect the way we see things. You may think of your husband as this inconsiderate asshole. He's completely selfish, right? And he only does whatever he wants for himself. He only looks out for himself. Very rarely does he look out for the family. That's a lie. And you are blinded by your past. So force yourself, challenge yourself to dig deeper. Why are you holding this anger? Why are you holding this resentment? Are you afraid of something? How might your past be showing up? Another thing I want you to think of is, why is there constant arguing? Why is it that you guys are at the state where you cannot have effective, uh, an effective or unhealthy conversation? Are you both on the defense? Are you both attempting to communicate something with one another? Well, you know what? Just like you compromise yourself, I compromise myself too. I don't complain about it. I don't say shit. I just roll out of bed stretch, and then I go to work at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm there for 12 hours, 80 hours, 24 hours, whatever the hell it is, right? I know I exaggerated with the 80, but just hear me out. And I do all of these things for you, but I don't complain. I don't tell you about the headaches I have. I don't tell you about the constant pounding. I don't tell you that I actually want to go to sleep right now. I've been wanting to go to sleep for a while. I don't say any of that. I don't complain. I don't complain and I don't go to the doctors. You want to know why? You want to know why I don't go to the doctors? I don't go to the doctors because I don't want them to find something wrong and I don't want them to put me on medical leave because if they put me on medical leave, then that means no work, which means no money. And then I have to worry about probably getting a desk job or even worse, it screws me with promotion. You have no clue what I put myself through to meet the needs and the demands of the family. You have no clue what I put myself through so you can be a stay-at-home mom. You have no clue what I put myself through so that our kids can have a better life than I did. Mamas, I want you to open your eyes. I I get you're overwhelmed. I get you're frustrated. But I want you to take it back. And fellas, if you guys are listening, I want you to do the same thing. I see you. I see both of you doing everything you can to meet the needs of your family. But also, you guys are using each other and completely, completely, what is the damn word that I'm trying to come up with? You guys are positioning each other as the enemy. And you guys are using each other instead of leaning towards each other. You guys are using each other as punching bags instead of walking toward each other and nurturing each other and loving each other. That defensiveness is only because you do not feel safe and you feel as if you constantly have to defend yourself. But the only reason why you're there is because you are not opening up. You are not sharing. You are not communicating. You are keeping things in. 
And as you continue to keep things in, that resentment slowly builds and that anger grows. So what I'd like you to do, instead of being on this defensive path, instead, what I'd like you to do is I want you to go ahead and take this stance of empathy. How can I relate with my partner? How can I step away from the situation and instead of personalizing everything that my partner's saying, how can I listen to understand? Because what I'm doing is I'm feeling, I'm positioning my partner as the enemy and I'm personalizing everything they're saying as a personal attack towards me when that's not happening. I also might need to create boundaries. I also might even go back to why it's important that we're friends, the best of friends. Because if I remember that, if I remember when we first became really good friends and when we were there and we supported each other and when we were at this place of just like where we could flirt with one another and where we could just have fun together and we didn't take each other so seriously. We were able to just have fun. We were able to we we're able to enjoy each other's company. And now we're in this place where we're just so overwhelmed that we just can't seem to go ahead and connect. And we get into this defensive mode and we argue, we hold all of these things in because we don't want our partner to see us vulnerable because we don't trust it anymore. So right now, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to remember a memory of you and your husband. Think back to a time when you and your partner were the best of friends, the best of friends. You loved, you supported each other. You guys worked at things together. When I think of the times when me and Willie were the best of friends It's pretty recent um, because I feel like he and I are truly best of friends. Don't get me wrong. I don't have a perfect relationship. But if I was to close my eyes right now, do it with me unless you're driving or working out. But if I was to close my eyes right now, I would immediately, immediately, the first time, like one of the first early on memories, early, early on memories when we were first married, it was when we were in a two-bedroom apartment, no furniture, TV on the floor. That was like literally the only furniture we had. We didn't have a bed. We had comforters. We had like maybe like two or three comforters that I stole from home. And we had a blanket, a Mexican blanket, really, really big Mexican blanket that was on the ground. We didn't have a bed. And I remember back then, Willie would take showers, right? So he would take showers, duh. But there was something really fun about these showers. When he would be in the shower, I would go and fill up a pail full of water. It wasn't a pail. I don't think we had a pail. I think it was like a bowl. I would fill up a bowl full of cold water. <laughs> and I would run to the bathroom, right? I would run to the bathroom, step on the step on the toilet because I'm, re- I'm really short. But I would run to the bathroom, step on the toilet, and I would throw all of that cold-ass water onto him. And he would run out of the shower with soap and all, butt-ass naked, after me. And then we would wrestle. And then we would do other things. But, yeah, we would wrestle. And, oh, my gosh, I'm, like, imagining it happen. He would, like, literally run out of the shower. He's like, oh. And he would just, he would just, like, we would just play. And it was just so much fun. So, so much fun. That's me and my husband being best of friends. And so I want you to think back to a time when you and your husband were best of friends. What did it look like? What did it feel like? What do you remember? Was it a crazy, silly story like mine? Was it even better than mine? Remember a time when it was just both the two of you? No kids. Ah, those were the days. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. I love and adore my kids, but sometimes, ah. It was just so much fun. And then I think about something recent. And the recent one was on a walk that my husband and I went on with the girls last night. Just he and I talking about our goals, where we see ourselves, the things that are currently happening for, you know, to us or, you know, with us, like some of the troubles, 
some of the things we're experiencing, just a really open, nice conversation. He and I are getting so caught up in the conversation where we keep on stepping on Scout. (laughs) Poor Scout. Scout's our dog. But yeah, like we've positioned our partner as the enemy. And if you're in a healthy relationship, it's not fair. That's not fair at all. But if you're in an unhealthy relationship, okay, then maybe it's time to go out and seek help. If you feel completely compromised, if there's some level of abuse, that's something different, right? But if you are in a very healthy relationship, I want you to be honest with yourself and your spouse. That is very, very important. It's very, very important. And it's also important for you to hold yourself accountable. And by holding yourself accountable, you might have to kind of like switch this light on. Hold up, Veronica. You're starting to view your husband as the enemy. Switch the light on. What's going on? Stop. Listen to understand. You don't have to agree. Just listen to understand. Gain control of your emotions. What is he telling you? Put yourself in his shoes. With all of these things, you will find yourself more and more connected with him. And he, in turn, will do the same thing. What we don't want is for both of you to forget the value of your marriage. We don't want you to forget that because that's usually what ends up happening. Divorced couples have forgotten the value of their marriage. Not all. Don't get me wrong. There are toxic relationships. Let me go over a few key indicators on whether or not you're in a toxic relationship. There might be a great amount of resentment, great amount of dishonesty and disrespect. There might be hiding and secrecy with regards to finances or him stepping out of, you know, out of the marriage. There might be some level of controlling behaviors such as envy or jealousy. And in addition to that, he might be emotionally, mentally, physically abusive with you. That's how we know we're in a toxic relationship. However, if you are in a very healthy, I shouldn't say very healthy because we're all working on being in a very, very healthy relationship. But if you're in a healthy relationship and it's one that you no longer want to go ahead and you don't want to be on this damn hamster wheel anymore. And you want to be in a place where you guys are both no longer roommates. You guys see each other. You guys are ready to do something different. You guys are ready to do the work. You guys are ready to connect. You're ready to connect and you realize that Although it might not be 100% your fault, and, and it's not, don't get me wrong, it takes two to tango, right? And although it's not, you know, 100% your fault, there are areas that you definitely want to work on, but you don't know how. That's where I come in. I'm here to help. And what I'd like to do is I would like to personally invite you to join my workshop. Reconnect with your husband so that you're no longer roommates. If this is true for you, I want you to say yes. Even if you're all by yourself or even if there's somebody next to you, I still want you to say yes. The emptiness, the empty promises just aggravate me so much. He says he will do something or take care of something, then he doesn't. The passion is so low these days that I feel parenthood or other commitments are taking control. I want to feel like it's me he wants to spend time with. Communication has always been a weak point for us. He says things without thinking. I try to logically work through things and he reacts emotionally. I try to say what I feel in a constructive manner. He takes it personally and attacks me. Boundaries are a confusing topic for me because I am a helper. I have this innate need to help anyone I can. Few said yes to at least two or more of them that I want you to join my workshop. Ladies, this is limited seating, so make sure you get on this. You can find the link in our show notes, or you can go to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop. Again, that's empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop. You will have the opportunity to work with me. This will be a live Zoom call. And if you can't go, don't worry about it. It will be recorded, and you can watch it at a later time. You, as well as your husband, if you'd like. But this is primarily focused on women. See you there. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. 
We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl gang. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind Podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind Podcast has been about creating hope listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find free Freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. Oh, hey, it's Erin. And I'm Michaela, and we're the hosts of the Two Sober Girls Podcast, and we are on a mission to spill the wild truth about sobriety. Forget the rosé all day cliche. Sobriety is flipping amazing. Absolutely. It's not just about quitting the drink. It's a gift you give yourself and your loved ones. So what are you waiting for? Break up with that old toxic relationship with alcohol and let us show you the possibilities. And here's the thing. Everything your precious heart desires becomes way easier without the influence of alcohol. 
We're not just two sober girls. We're also wellness coaches. We're here to show you how to optimize health, lifestyle, and beauty, feel sexy and alive as F. So stay tuned because we're rolling out new episodes every Monday, wherever you get your podcasts and trust us. They have your name written all over them. We can't wait to share the magic of sobriety and wellness with you. Subscribe to Two Sober Girls Podcast today and come follow us on Instagram for behind the scenes action and send us a DM. We can't wait to meet you.